so welcome you all back to the interesting session of today which is pharmacokinetics distribution so procrastinated no i just wait until the last second to do my work because i'll be older therefore wiser is this so or you all a procrastinated what happens if a life saving drug thinks that no i'm a little tired i'll work tomorrow think about that okay so today's session is distribution we'll be briefly discussing on the distribution there are four major compartments which will be involved in the distribution which is plasma fat cells extracellular fluid intracellular fluid these are the four major compartments which is involved in the distribution apart from that you will be having many other compartments like synovial fluids in the joints and you will be having cerebrospinal fluid and fetus in pregnancy so when the drug is administered into the plasma the drug will be distributed after the absorption it will be distributed into various other compartments so if there is any uh, there is no factor involved in the distribution there will be no storage in order to um, be within the compartment so you have uh, proteins you have proteins which is the which increases the storage capacity of a compartment so you will be having proteins into which the drug binds and which increases the storage capacity of each compartment so the drug after administration it will be absorbed and it will be distributed to the various compartment and it will by binding to certain proteins not all the drug concentration will be binding to the uh, proteins certain drugs will be remain unbound to the protein so those unbound drugs will be again distributed to the other compartments so this is how the distribution continues until there is some balance between the bound drug and the unbound drug so this is how the distribution takes place so next moving on to the apparent volume of distribution you must know about this term what is apparent volume of distribution so but this uh, this is uh, think about this is body and the drug is distributed so you can get with this picture which is meant that how far uh, or how well the drug is distributed into the body is said to be the apparent volume of distribution and don't worry you have a formula for calculating the apparent volume of distribution so you have you must know the two uh, concentrations in order to find out the apparent volume of distribution so there are two terms which are involved are the concentration of the drug which is administered to the body so what is the concentration you are going to administer into the patient body that concentration you must know and the second uh, concentration is uh, what is a plasma concentration uh, after taking the blood in the blood how much the drug concentration is Th that concentration is necessary these two with these two concentrations you can cal calculate the volume of distribution by total drug into the body that is uh, total drug administered into the body divided by the plasma drug concentration is the volume of distribution so you will be getting some volume of distribution by calculating it and if the volume of distribution is more when compared to other drugs volume of distribution it means that uh, so it is more widely distributed into the body and so uh, there will be no desired actions because it will be distributed throughout all the tissues there will be there will be never a desired effect at the desired site so if there is a little volume of distribution it indicates that it has a desired effect at the desired site for example you can check in the site or you can check in google the volume of distribution of monoclonal antibodies those val volume of distribution will be very less so it has a desired action at the desired site because its volume of distribution is limited to its desired site this is how its volume of distribution is important in deciding how far the drug is distributed and moving on to the protein binding so you have a protein binding so this is a uh, second most important uh, uh, criteria of volume of distribution because uh, you have uh, two terms which is unbound drug and unbound drug 
you must know the difference between these two drugs as we already said bound drugs are those drugs which are binded to the protein and the unbound drugs are the free drugs which remain in the plasma so this are the difference between the bound drug and the unbound drug so you have various proteins like albumin alpha acid glycoprotein lipoprotein and the globulins which are involved in the uh, binding of drugs so albumin is the most common protein which binds to almost all the drugs that is almost all drugs binds to albumin so next to albumin alpha 1 acid glycoprotein you can wonder where are these proteins are synthesis yes there are most of the proteins are synthesized in the liver so in case think of pediatrics in pediatrics the liver will be very less developed so the protein synthesis will also be less and the protein affinity to the drugs will also be less so what happens to the bounded uh, drugs bounded drugs will be less what happens to the free drug the free drug in the plasma will be high so there will be an increased risk of toxicity so in pediatrics when compared to adults you must be very cautious in deciding the dose of a drug since the liver is less developed and there will be more free drug in the plasma so next what may be the therapeutic dose required in hypoproteinemia this is similar to the pediatrics hypoproteinemia which is which indicates the less protein in the blood so when there is less protein in the blood again the unbound drugs will be more and so the therapeutic dose must be less not high so the therapeutic dose required in hypoproteinemia should be less next think about the situation you have two highly protein bound drugs and these are the two highly protein bound drugs warfarin and aspirin warfarin which is an anticoagulant and aspirin is a salicylic so these two drugs are there and you are giving these two drugs at the same time so what happens what what can happen so one drug will be highly protein bound than the other in this case aspirin is highly protein bound than warfarin so that's why the warfarin will be displaced from the protein by aspirin so both will compete each other and aspirin will succeed and warfarin will get displaced from the proteins so warfarin concentration in the plasma will be increased and it leads to toxicity which is hemorrhage so when giving these two drugs we must be cautious so what is the relationship between the protein binding risk of toxicity and pharmacological effect so by this time you will be knowing that the link between the protein binding and the risk of toxicity let's see once again so highly protein binding drugs so again the concept highly protein binding drugs will be uh, bound to the proteins and there will be less uh, unbound drug so risk of toxicity will be less But what happens to the pharmacological effect so a drug will be binded to the protein and that's why its pharmacological effect will be maintained for a longer time until the drug will, uh, frees from the protein but what what happens to the low protein bound drugs low protein bound drugs will have a higher risk of toxicity as the unbound drugs are higher in the plasma and if we need an immediate pharmacological effect low protein bound drugs are a good choice and placental transfer if you think of a placental transfer you must know this term that is syn cytio tropoblast which is syn is together cytio is cells tropo is nutrition blast is the bud and this is the one which helps in the nutritional transfer from the mother to the fetus and uh, through this uh, syn cytio tropoblast even drugs can transfer Uh, into the uh, fetus so the drugs must be used carefully in pregnancy patients and you have certain drugs like um, verapamil and quinidine which are the substrates of oct 
Tn1 and Og Tn2. These are expressed as at the maternal phasing membrane of syncytiotropoblast. So they will be appearing in the membrane of the mother uh, of uh, syncytiotropoblast where they uh, facilitate in the uh, protein transfer from the maternal blood to the placenta and also the fetus. So when these drugs are the substrate of these two, so this can easily transfer the plasma. But verapamil uh, is used in uh, pregnancy, in hypertension, uh, its side effects are not that much uh, uh, cautious to the fetus. So verapamil is used in uh, pregnancy, in hypertension. So blood brain barrier. So blood brain barrier is another compartment which will be involved in the distribution and blood brain barrier is completely, it's mainly made up of lipids. That is why lipid soluble drugs will be easily distributed into the blood brain barrier. Whereas, uh, easily, you can easily cross the blood brain barrier. So, and in case of uh, uh, inflammatory conditions like meningitis, it will be less developed. And uh, so, uh, since it is less developed, the dose of these drugs, so dose of antibiotics in case of meningitis, should not be reduced till the infection rate is completely eradicated next moving on to the today's event before moving on to the today's event we have seen about the volume of distribution we have seen about the protein binding and the placental transfer that is inside the tropoblast and you have seen about the uh, blood brain barrier and uh, blood brain barrier about blood brain barrier lipid soluble drugs are easily distributed into the blood brain barrier these are the uh, uh, compartments which must be uh, which are the criteria for distribution so today's event is uh, we have an interesting event our academy and uh, our academy uh, and medical six are um, combinedly conducting an event and we have created a group in a web in our website to find out the teacher in students so students are the best teachers okay so it's exclusively for second medical and paramedical students second year medical and paramedical students and topic is you can create any video of your interest in second year pharmacology and the last date for submission of videos is 26th may 2021 and for join this event you have to click the link below and join the group of the best teaching videos so it will be uploaded in our website the best teaching videos will be uploaded in uh, as well as in our website and our youtube channel so thanks in advance for joining this event